Hello birds and bees, you all wanted a story time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna story time and rather than just having to sit and watch me talk, we're gonna watch me get into my hawk's makeup instead. I asked a lot of you on Instagram what uh, story time you want me to do and the results were kind of split, so I guess I'm gonna have to do more of these um, of me getting into various cosplays and just chatting shit. I want to start off with something happy, so I'm gonna save um, my past trauma stuff for another video, maybe a more serious one where I am actually just sat talking to the camera. So we're gonna start off at the beginning and talk about how Brett and I met. The year was 2015. I do not know the month because I'm very bad with dates. I was currently dating my boyfriend Ash and living with his parents at his parents' house because that's where his parents lived. This has got off track, I just need to use my normal voice. So Ash and I had been together for about two years at this point and we had been friends for about three or four years before that and we were saving up money to buy a house. Now I had gone to every MCM Comic Con that's in London, twice a year that is, um, for... Well, since I was 18, so for about two years, and Ash didn't actually want to go with me this time because he wanted to save the money and then it was half the cost because it was just me going. And I didn't really know anyone else that went, so I decided to go on my own and treat it as like an adventure. So I organised with some people that I hadn't even really spoken to before, I just posted on the MCM Facebook page, does anyone have, you know, a spare bit of room on their floor that I can crash on, I will pay, you know, a percentage towards the hotel cost I want to go from, um, all weekend basically, I wanted to go Friday, Saturday, Sunday and leave Monday, and these people were like, yeah, yeah, let's do that, that'll be fun, we're fine for it, you know, we're really friendly people. Um, and then the more I spoke to them, they were like, oh yeah, we're going to get drunk and play Mario Kart. And I wasn't really a big drinker or a big partier. I was quite introverted um, back in the day. And that scared me a lot. But I decided to go with it anyway, you know, new experiences, meet new people. Maybe I'd like it. I mean, I do enjoy doing that one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe I'd like it more with a bigger group. So I decided to go ahead and do that anyway. So I booked my coach tickets and then... It was about a week before and I looked at the date on my coach tickets and panicked because I saw the date and I was like, oh my god, I've booked the coach tickets a day early, I'm going up on the Thursday, I don't have anywhere to stay, so I booked myself a hotel on my own for the Thursday night and then I'd go join the other people on the Friday. And Ash drops me off at the bus stop and then he has to go on to work, so I'm left at the bus stop waiting and I actually see a group of people there with really weirdly shaped luggage. And if you've ever been to a con before, you know that weirdly shaped luggage that's wrapped in bin bags is usually there to hide weapons and big props and things like that. So I approached them and I was like, hey, are you going to London Comic Con? And one of them turned around and it was actually someone that my boyfriend at the time, Ash, had tried to set me up with with a friendship because he went to school with them and he knew that they were into cosplay too and we'd become Facebook friends but we'd not really spoke. So I was like, oh my god, Sophie? And they're like, yeah, Laura, oh my gosh. And you know, so I started chatting with them and it was a group of three people. It was Sophie, um, it was Sophie's best friend Becky, and it was Becky's boyfriend, who was Brett. So at this point, Becky and Brett are relatively quiet and I'm just chatting away to Sophie because I somewhat know her and then the coach arrives and they all get on ahead of me. Um, then I go on after them and she checks my ticket and she goes, this is a ticket for tomorrow. So I'd originally actually got the right ticket and then confused myself in my head thinking I got the wrong ticket and I'm like, oh god, no, I've just I've just booked a hotel for today, oh my god, because I thought I'd got the dates wrong and I'd actually had them right and I was like panicking. She's like, oh, are you with the people that just got on? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, don't worry, hon, I'll, I'll clear a space for you, you can get on now, I'll sort it out for you. I hadn't even needed to book the hotel, I had the dates right in the first place, I just panicked myself because I was going on my own. But, you know, wasn't even meant to be there, so probably wouldn't have even met them if I hadn't had that really random, like, brain fart and gotten everything confused. So the coach that took us from my hometown at the time to London um, was a double-decker and all the um, standard seats were upstairs and then the first-class seats were downstairs and they all had tables and a bit more legroom. So upstairs was all fully booked so she cleared me a space out in the first-class area. So I was away from Brett and um, Sophie and Becky, I was away from all them, but you know, at least I was going to London. And then the coach actually broke down on the way. I don't know what happened, the coach just completely broke down and we had to wait for another coach. 
at this point I'm just like having major anxiety because this is my first trip on my own, everything was going wrong and it was just one thing after another. But the replacement coach that came to pick us up like an hour of sitting on the side of the road was basically a standard coach, you know, no upper deck, no lower deck. And I chose to sit next to them because there was no seating plan or anything. And Sophie chose to sit next to her friend Becky rather than Becky sitting next to Brett. So I was just sat next to Brett. And we were relatively quiet on the way and we started listening to each other's music and just talking about things like that. And it got to the stage where I was sharing with them how nervous I was to go stay with strangers. And they were like, well, you can come crash on our floor if you want. And I was like, really? Like, yeah, we're really chill. We tend to just go to bed, uh, maybe play some games after the con. And it's like, oh, that sounds great. Like, such a load off my mind because I'd already met these people now and I somewhat knew them through mutuals. So I thanked them and said, I'm going to stay at the hotel that I've already paid for on my own tonight. And then I will speak to the people that I was going to stay with, let them know what's happening. I'm sure they won't mind. I've got a blow up bed. I'll bring it with me and I'll meet you guys all at the hotel tomorrow and split the costs. And they were absolutely fine with it because the way they saw it, they're just getting the room cheaper. The weekend itself just flew by and it was honestly really, really fun. I don't really remember much of it apart from the fact that I was sexually harassed in my Yunoga size. Someone came up behind me and squeezed my butt, but that's a story for another day. We then decided that we actually wanted to continue the friendship because we all got along relatively well and we clearly lived near each other. So we were like, well, how about once a week we all meet to play Dungeons and Dragons? and it became a big thing and every Sunday we went over to Brett and Becky's place. Um, I brought Ash and uh, Brett and Becky brought someone that they worked with because they both had the same job and we had like this little group going where we'd play Dungeons and Dragons every Sunday and it was, it was really fun. And as you do, you tend to filter out people when you're in groups and you end up chatting to some of them a lot more than you would others. We didn't really have a group chat or anything. And I ended up speaking to Brett a lot more often because we had so much in common. And we were both Northern, now living in the South, which was really, really weird that we'd actually met there. When, you know, we both, both our families live like an hour apart, like six hours away from where we were now. And I really, really love crime documentaries and Brett was alright with them too and we chatted a lot about that and we just, pretty much we found anything to chat about and sooner or later feelings started happening and we obviously were both in long term relationships so we, nothing really happened but you know, flirting started happening as well, just casual, smooth flirting, I don't really know how to put it. But our characters in D&D &D started to get closer too, which was really inappropriate because he was the dungeon master. Um, so he'd put characters in there specifically to challenge my character. My character was like all charisma. She was basically a slag. <laughs> she was literally the kind of character that would try to sleep her way out of any problem. I based her on the, um, you know, the future armor episode where something like this happens and Amy is the like siren type thing and she just sleeps with the orc to get them past. I basically want a character like that so you can see where that went. About a year passed and you can already tell that it was it was starting to affect our relationships you know Brett and I had actually started to discuss that we had feelings for each other and we were like but you know we can't really do anything about it and yes I did kiss him while I was still with my partner it was mainly a let's see if sparks fly kind of thing and it did not help at all because it was so so sparky and then we basically started to drift away from our current partners because we weren't emotionally attached to them anymore we weren't emotionally invested and to be honest i'd never really had physical attraction in a sexual way to my partner at the time like we were we were the best of friends honestly we really were but i'd always kind of I did love him, but it was like loving him like a brother, if you know what I mean. There was no, I want to fuck that. Not that I've ever had that with cis men, but ayo. For some reason, Brett's the exception to that rule. And I ended up having a really long, hard talk with Ash, and it was one of the hardest decisions we had to make. He basically said, you need to cut off all contact with Brett, or you need to break up with me. And... I could understand exactly where it's coming from because I would make anyone do the same in his position. In order to think about it, I actually went up north for an entire week um, and cut off contact from both of them to see who I'd actually miss and I found myself texting Brat, so there was my answer. But I'd been together with Ash for 
oh god four years coming up to four years and we owned a house at this point and it was it was so difficult but Ash and I did end up breaking up in the end we decided it was best for us to try and stay friends instead of doing anything else and Brecky ended Brecky Becky ended up breaking up with Brett and even though she played massive victim and started telling everyone oh my best friend um is the reason that me and Brett aren't together anymore when we barely said hardly any words to each other but you know that's fine we're not gonna spill that tea and when we were both um single I we I took it in turn sleeping at what was my home at the time with Ash and at Brett's apartment because Becky had moved back in with her parents and we decided we wanted to get our own place so we moved out and we got a two-bedroomed flat that allowed pets so that I could bring my rabbits with me and yeah we sort of wanted to leave it a decent amount of time before we said anything officially because we didn't think it was fair to our exes and then both our exes well my ex gets into a relationship really quickly and we're like oh okay so I guess it's fine so then around July time I can't remember what date in July we basically well I made it Facebook official while he was sleeping and he didn't know and he went into work the next day and everyone was like way well done and he's like what what did I do so yeah we yeah we got we got physical pretty quickly because of course we did we were finally alone and free but it was it was honestly really really nice to just be with someone that i actually wanted to do things with for a change i mean to those that really know me um you know that i tend to prefer women i lean towards women a lot more recently even though all my exes are male i've just it's just something I've recently worked out in my head as to why all my previous relationships have failed and Brett is just like the exception to that he's like the only man that I've ever I wouldn't say really loved because you know love is a broad spectrum but he's the only man that I've ever had sexual desire towards and it's really nice to be honest for a change so yeah that's pretty much the story of how Brett and me got together one of the hardest parts was obviously the breaking up with my um best friend because <laughs> obviously we, we we've drifted apart now we we never really talk at all anymore which is understandable i wouldn't expect him to want to talk to me after all that but i mean we're on speaking terms you know we don't hate each other occasionally we'll check in with one another and although it was the hardest decision i've ever had to make it was also i think the best decision i've ever made because i'm so happy now i have flynn i'm settled i'm starting off my cosplay with so much like inspiration from everyone and so so much support with my mental health that brett provides me that i've never had before and of course all the love from you guys as well which i never ever thought i would be where i am today and i wouldn't be where i am today without brett and i can honestly thank him for that because he's just honestly wholeheartedly supports me and believes in me and i couldn't have come this far without it but yes, I will try to do more of these in the future if there is a particular story in my life you want me to tell. Um, the other options currently are Flynn's birth, the marriage, and any past trauma that I am willing to get off my chest. Thank you all so much for sticking to the end. I love you all. Bye!